is a, a keynote session. The topic at hand is the changing face of marketing in an increasingly digital world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our keynote uh, address deliverer, Mr. Atul Raja, Executive Vice President, Global Marketing Vadwani Foundation. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure being here, and uh, I must thank the E4M team and Karan to have invited me here to share my views on a topic which I feel is extremely critical today, and it cuts across all the verticals of the comms industry. And when I say marketing, you'll realize, uh, you know, that it is applicable to some component or the other of marketing. How the digital transformation has impacted marketing and how marketeers have to reinvent themselves. I'll start by saying there have been two defining changes. F change number one, the strategic shift from brand centricity to customer centricity is almost complete. You know, the pandemic has changed the world, so why won't it change marketing? And point number two is a logical corollary of point number one. Obsession with the customer is the new normal now. So with these two thematic components, I'd just like to highlight what I think are my top 10 uh, transformational elements of marketing as impacted by the increased digitization that has taken place during the pandemic and post the pandemic it continues. First of all, the very economics of marketing has changed. You know, uh, so even small players now can enter what I call as the advertising dog fight. And by no means I'm saying this that the bigger players with deeper pockets uh, you know, don't have the advantage. They have the advantage, but they no longer have the decisive advantage. So it's like a level playing field today. So from a marketeer perspective, uh, you know, a higher the spend need not uh, result today in higher ROI. So when I'm speaking to you about these transformations, it's quite fascinating. You'll realize there are challenges, there are opportunities as a marketeer you know, you may want to look at it either way. Secondly, inbound marketing has taken center stage, you know, uh, with the media landscape virtually exploding, the footfalls to various platforms of organizations has also exploded. Now, these are the footfalls that are doing lots of research. Uh, you know, they are very pre-purchase savvy. So inherent in this, is that there is a tectonic shift from what I call as brand push to brand pull. You know, when I started in my marketing and advertising career, we used to focus on print ads, electronic media, you know, and uh, perhaps a few radio FM channels. So what was happening then? We always wanted to communicate what we wanted to say. But the trend is reversed now. You are actually you have to communicate what the customer wants to hear, right? So that's what inbound is actually changing the face of communication per se. Thirdly, somebody mentioned it in one of the earlier panels, content has taken preeminence over creatives, right? So my induction into the advertising and marketing field, uh, first we used to conceptualize creatives with our ad agencies and you know the content used to come in as an afterthought. Today I feel the situation is again reversed. Uh, it is the content that is driving the creatives. Yeah, so uh, y y there are three types of uh, content tasks that take place, create, curate, and cultivate. I think amongst all the three, the curate version is really exploding now. And uh, there are brands that I personally feel are content-driven brands. A Zomato is one, you know, it has a one and a half million followers on Twitter, it has close to two million followers on Facebook, and you'll keep wondering, like, uh, Zomato should be focusing on footfalls to its app from where the business comes in. 
how come they are getting so much traction on these social channels? Simply because uh, they are using a lot of humor in their content. They are uh, using the cultural aspect in their content. They are using trending topics in that content. And I personally feel content has made that brand to a large extent. Look at Oreo. When Oreo came into India, uh, you know, it was struggling against established brands like Parley, Britannia, right? And they did a lot of outreach to consumers, but it was finally their content strategy that helped them. So if anybody has followed Oreo, there is something called daily dunks, right? So they have this daily dunk content, like if it's a June 21, which is the longest day of the year, they'll have a stretched uh, brand of, uh, or the packaging of Oreo, right? If it is July 1, which is doctor's day, they'll have Oreo packaged, you know, in, in tablets where the tablets are kept. So that's how they created a lot of traction and the brand is really doing well now. The fourth element which is absolutely critical is data has come into marketing in a big way. Now, uh, you know, so it is helping marketing in uh, smart decisions and in informed decisions and in intelligent decisions. And, uh, you know, if you look at scenario based marketing, it is also helping you in, uh, you know, measuring the uh, you know, uh, the ROI of your marketing efforts in a very scientific manner. Uh, AB InBev, the liquor major, very recently I, I was reading, it has gone on record to say how they're using the data of their 2.5 billion customers to, and it, they've increased their sales by almost 80%, right? Uh, Nike is snapping up tech companies now because they want to get into the mind of consumers. They want to, you know, just understand what is the consumer psychographics and how it will influence uh, incremental purchases in the future. Point number five is, uh, you know, if I may use the term, uh, consumers are now increasingly promiscuous in their brand relationships, right? Whether it's a manufacturer or a retailer or an organization, it, finding it, marketing departments are finding it very difficult to understand uh, what it takes to get consumer stickiness, right? Because where he's getting influenced and where he's moving out of your value chain, it's very getting very difficult to understand and hence consumer loyalty or brand loyalty, I personally feel will be the bane of marketeers in the future. It's going to be the most difficult task that marketeers are going to face now. Another uh, aspect is ad blindness, which is again uh, pretty fascinating. 50% of the internet users today, consciously, subconsciously or unconsciously, uh, you know, they just are averse to any pop-ups, any advertising. They just don't see it, right? And when the, you know, uh, initial internet banners came up in 1994, when AT&T came up with the very first banner, the CTR at that time used to be 44%. And imagine today a CTR of 0.05%, which is still considered to be very healthy. So that's the kind of challenge in front of the marketeers as to, you know, what happens, whether they should actually advertise or they should start looking at some other uh, media apart from pop-ups. Point number seven is the shift, very shifting nature of the consumer en engagement. When I was growing up in the field of marketing, the typical marketing funnel used to have a wide base at the bottom, right? And that used to be the area where we used to call it as the considered set. Uh, so that's where we attacked the consumers first. Uh, you know, then you narrow down his choice, go down to the next level, attack them again, and go to the apex of the funnel where two, three brands are there and your marketing efforts used to endeavor that, you know, you are part of those two, three brands. But it's all gone topsy-turvy. There is no considered set today, right? Uh, but the consumer starts by having just two, three brands uh, in his uh, considered set. And, uh, you know, if you want to, so it's a challenge, like how, what do you do to just 
hit him directly to be there in his initial list because there is no second opportunity. Point number eight is the massive clutter. How do you avoid clutter? I personally feel, uh, you know, uh, to avoid clutter today is to be become part of the clutter itself, right? High frequency is high engagement. Uh, you can't avoid uh, being part of the clutter and you can't avoid the high frequency. Uh, you know, I am personally actually doing in a six months time, I must have done more than 600 creatives, right? There was a time when we used to give a front page ad in Times of India or a front page Solus ad, you know, or a back page premium ad in Hindustan Times and used to feel like it's a job well done for the quarter. But that's not the case today. You virtually need to have a creative factory. You need to churn out one creative after the other, per perhaps three or four creatives to uh, achieve that kind of deep penetration and reach and to become part of that clutter, to actually avoid that clutter in digital space today. Point number nine, I think uh, with the digital media exploding today, being human has become paramount, uh, you know. Uh, in 2020, when the pandemic was at its peak, uh, you know, there was a co-commercial called, uh, you know, the human race, which caught my attention. Uh, it sets things like, you know, for every boundary, uh, for every barrier that is set up, there are boundaries that are torn down. For every classroom that is, for every school that is closed, that are class, there are classrooms that are opened up, hundreds of them. And it went on and on. And it ended, the commercial actually ended by saying, thanks for filling a glass with kindness and hope, you know. So consumers today are actually valuing uh, or they are looking at the brand values. They are looking at the values of the organization or the brand that they want to associate with. It's not just the functional feature. And that's what uh, the digital explosion is actually doing. It's bringing the human side of the brands to the fore today. And finally, 360 degree view of the consumer is paramount today. You have to dissect your consumer and uh, understand the consu you know, your target audience from left, right, center, or from whichever angle you look at the consumer. Uh, it's all about deep cons customer intelligence. It's all about insights. It's all about initiating in immersive conversations. Because if you don't understand your consumer today, perhaps he will move out of your value chain very soon. And marketeers are increasingly warming up to the fact today that deep understanding of the consumer translates into unprecedented levels of customer engagement, right? That's the bottom line today. Uh, look at Starbucks, uh, you know, how it uses the loyalty data of its consumers uh, and uh, gets into very specific behaviors and past purchasing patterns to give them very specific offers and to give them an experience that is unforgettable. So maybe the Starbucks consumer will always go to Starbucks and perhaps avoid a cafe coffee day. That's the endeavor. So these are, uh, you know, uh, top 10 changes that I felt that the digital expo explosion has brought into marketing which marketeers need to brace up both as challenges and as opportunities. And having said that, you know, I would just like to end this, you know, my speech by saying that we need to attack the consumer today at every stage of the consumer decision journey. That's where we are going towards. And that's the difference between omni-channel marketing and what we call as multi-channel marketing. Where you look at a consumer today, you talk to him at the call center, then at the next stage you drive him to your chat pot, then at the next stage you drive him to the social handles and hence to the uh, you know, uh, call to action page on your website. So you are actually living the experience at every stage of the consumer decision journey. 
And uh, folks, I'd just like to end by saying that uh, the changes to marketing because of uh, increased digitization are not just incremental, they are fundamental. And so please brace up for the changes. Uh, and, uh, you know, because it's all about new learnings, new applications, and uh, new ways to reach new consumers. Thank you, folks, for your time, and have a great 2023. Thank you very much for a lovely keynote session. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ruhail Armin, Senior Editor, BW Business World and E4M, to present a small token of appreciation to Mr. Atul Raja. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.